Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial or welcome if this is your first time on my channel. Today we are going to be making this beautiful yet simple book sleeve. Today you will need a 4.5 crochet hook, a stitch marker, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors. And of course you will need your yarn. I'm using acrylic pink yarn. This pattern works best with acrylic yarn if you're using finer weight yarn you will have to size down on your hook and crochet more rounds this book sleeve also fits an average book size eight inches for the length about five and one quarter for the width so if you have a book that is around those measurements you should be fine because the yarn will stretch so to make a slip knot grab the beginning piece of your yarn hold it in place with two fingers you're going to wrap it around to the front you have an X you will grab the bottom of the X pull up a little bring it over the top and now we will pull on this bottom part of the X pull up this new piece of yarn and slide off your fingers and pull this loop close. So now we have our slip knot and we will put this around our crochet hook and pull on the working piece of yarn which is the piece that is connected to your skein. Just pull gently until the knot closes around your crochet hook and now we can begin with our chain 21. So we're just grabbing the working piece of yarn, looping it around a crochet hook and pulling through the loop on our hook and just do this 21 times should look like this all right so here is my chain of 21 we will now chain an extra two and the next step is to half double crochet all the way down with a half double crochet of three in the very last stitch so to half double crochet we will yarn over skip these first two stitches we just made and go into this third one and again for a half double crochet you will yarn over go into the loop pull up a loop you now have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three and that is a half double crochet and we skip these first two stitches to make a mock half double crochet that way it is the same height as our actual half double crochet so now just do a whole row of half double crochets and don't forget to do three half double crochets in the very last stitch. I will meet you there. Okay, so I am at the very end of the row. I have two more stitches left. So second to last stitch, do one half double crochet. And then in this very last half double crochet, we are going to put three half double crochets. One, two, three. And so now we will turn our work and half double crochet all the way down again. And so our first half double crochet will be in the same half double crochet three we just did just now on the other side. And you can work into your beginning piece of yarn that way you do not have to sew it in later you can just do it as you go so have one half double crochet and one half double crochet into every other stitch all the way down and again it may be a little tricky to see the stitches but there are some holes that you that you can see and you will just work into those so right here we have one and it's really just under every half double crochet that we just did. That's where you will work into. So another one right here. Next one will be right here. And just keep doing that. And for the last stitch, we will do two half double crochet instead of three. So I will meet you down there once again. Okay. I am at the last two stitches. I did forget to put my stitch marker in so we can do that right now real quick so you do not get confused. Here is our half double crochet 
and you can kind of tell because it is more loose this is the chain two that is the mock half double crochet so we will put our stitch marker into the second chain and this is and this counts as the start of our round so we have two more stitches left so one half double crochet and then in the last one we do two half double crochets which is right here right under the chain two so now we have completed the first round and we need to connect our work so take this stitch marker out we will do one half double crochet into the top of the chain two so right here okay so that was the first half double crochet and now we will yarn over and do another half double crochet into the next stitch so now we have the first two half double crochets of round number two so grab your stitch marker put it in the first half double crochet and this is the mark of round two once again so now from round two all the way to round 40 ish we will just do half double crochets all the way around working all the way up until the book sleeve is to the length that we want it at you do want it to go over the top of your book that way your whole book is covered of course and yes that is really it for this pattern besides the strap and the puff flower making the actual book sleeve is the easiest part we are just repeating the same stitch over and over and you do not have any more increases so you do not have to worry about counting stitches you can do this while you're watching tv listening to podcasts this is a mindless project which is very nice and relaxing so i will meet you at the end of row two just to make sure we are on the same page so i will see you then okay so i am coming to the end of our round here i just wanted to finish this with you in case you are confused by the turning the stitch marker counts as our first stitch of the round so now we are on round one two this next one will be three so take your stitch marker out half the wool crochet into it put your stitch marker back and that is the first half double crochet of round three and again just repeating this over and over so i will meet you once i have 40 ish rounds i will come back and tell you just exactly how many rounds i have so yes you can see the book cover is already starting to form you can see how the corners are turning up and then you can see how stretchy it is so it can fit different, different sizes of books so i will see you in just a second okay so we have finished the length of the book sleeve i have 23 rows and that measures out to be about nine inches and six and a half inches wide and you stop before you cross your stitch marker if you didn't move it up every single row and I just follow my finger or my hook and so I know that around here I'm gonna say this stitch is the first stitch because we put this stitch marker at the beginning of the round so I have to end one stitch before which is right here and so you just finish your half double crochet and cut off a good amount of yarn off that way you can weave in this end okay so for the book flap you can either count from both sides and we will need four stitches so you will have to grab a second stitch marker and mark off those four i will count from the very middle and evenly find the middle of the front of our book sleeve and so before i do that i just mark random stitches that look like the middle so this is one two three four then i just go from the outside and count in to double check and adjust as i need okay so i got it right the first time there were 
10 stitches on both sides going in all the way to the marked stitches. So I will take out the stitch marker on the right side of the book sleeve and with our same yarn we will just pull this through and you can tie it or join with a slip stitch. I like to just tie it because I think it, it's more secure. I do two or three knots and then our book flap is made up of single crochets so we will just grab this yarn, pull it through the stitch where we made the knots, chain one, then we will go back in the same stitch, pull up the loop again, and just do a regular single crochet. Now we will go into the second stitch. We can work into this tail, that way we don't have to weave it in later. And we're just doing four single crochets till we reach the other stitch marker. Just this one. Then we will chain one and turn our work. Just turn over the whole book sleeve and then we will do four single crochets all the way down starting in the same stitch. And so for the book flap it will just be rows of single crochet over and over, chain one and turn until it reaches over the front of our book sleeve and goes to about wherever you want the button. I usually put it around here so I just make sure the book flap reaches over and you will need the book that you're using or you can just guesstimate if you don't have a specific book you want to use and then as I'm single crocheting I will just bring the flap over and make sure it is long enough and isn't stretching out too much or it's not too far down and I made it too long. So I will let you know how many rows I do but it is really up to you. So we did the chain one turn. I will do the second row with you. So one single crochet, two, three, and four. Chain one and turn and just keep repeating this. Okay so I made eight rows in total. I want the button to be right here so I will stop one row before because we have to make the little strap that will close around the button. So to make that, we will be doing one single crochet, chain two. We will skip the next two stitches and then single crochet in the fourth stitch. Then we will put just one more single crochet in this fourth stitch to even out the sides. And depending on how big your button is, you might need to make this hole a bit bigger. So now we will chain one and turn. And this is the last row of our book flap. We will single, do four single crochet all the way across, even in the chain two space we just made. So I have one single crochet, then we will go into the chains right here. Since we did two in the same stitch we can skip over to the chains that way we still end with four single crochets. So second single crochet, our third single crochet, and our fourth and final single crochet. And so now you can take your scissors and cut off a good amount of yarn. You will chain one and pull through all the way. You can tighten this and we will just weave in this end. Okay so for the button I'm going to use the same pink yarn that way it matches. You do not have to. It is a bit more difficult since the yarn is a lot thicker than thread or fine weight yarn because I have to fit it into, into this. So once you thread your needle you will just place the button wherever you want it. I use I put the book in the sleeve to make it a lot easier and that way you can really see where it will go. Pull the book flap as you can see the hole is right here so I will need to move the button down and it's really just placing it wherever you want. So for me it's good right there. Hold it in place you will start by coming out from inside 
of the book sleeve and leaving a bit of yarn out and back. That way you can tie and weave in your end in just a few seconds. So we go in. Now we're going to go out the next hole out through the back and be careful not to poke your book and we will just repeat this one more time going in first hole and now you can start pulling a bit tight just be sure that your back doesn't come out and then for the last time go in and out through the back of our book sleeve and pull tight. I usually do it just twice because after this the yarn can't fit through anymore. So from here I will just take these two pieces and just tie, tie them together and pull super tight so your button doesn't come loose. And I will make about three knots and then I will just cut off right here so they're even and then just weave in these ends through the back or the inside of our book sleeve. And then you have a functioning book sleeve. So now the last part is just to make the flower and sew the flower on. So let's get started with that. So for the flower, we will be working with a 3.5 crochet hook. You can use the same one that you use to make the book sleeve. Your flower will just turn out a bit bigger and I'm starting off with white because we are doing the petals first and that's the color I want the petals. So just grab whichever color you want and we will start with a magic ring. So to do a magic ring real quick, grab the yarn, wrap it around your fingers and make an X like this. Then we will go under the bottom of the X, grab the top part of the X, pull it under and twist up then we will grab the top part of the X again and turn our hook down and pull through the loop on our hook. Then slowly slide out your fingers without pulling on anything. And here we have our magic loop. So we will be doing six half double crochets into this loop. So yarn over, go into the loop, pull up your yarn. You have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three. So that is our first one. We will do five more. One, two, three, four, five. So make sure we have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can close our magic circle by pulling on the beginning piece of our yarn and we will connect this to make a circle by doing a slip knot into the very first half double crochet and I like to pull both strands of yarn through just to secure the magic knot you can pull and now you can drop the beginning piece of the yarn and we will just be working with our working piece that is attached to our skein. We will chain three. One, two, three, and then going into the same stitch, we will yarn over, go into it, pull up a loop. So now we have three loops on our hook and you will you want this to be loose. So you can pull up a little, you can see it loosens and we want to do this 10 times. So we just did the first one. We will repeat it nine more times. So just yarn over, go into the same stitch, pull up the yarn and make it loose. So that was the second one. This is number three. And it is going to get a bit difficult as there are more loops on our hook. And don't forget to keep pulling up so it stays loose. So don't lose count and just do this ten times and we will meet back. Okay, so I have repeated that process ten times. And now we will yarn over, turn your hook down, and pull through all the loops except the very last one. You want to leave one loop on there. So now you have two. You can tighten a tiny bit, yarn over, and pull, pull through those last two.
tighten it a tiny bit again. Chain three, one, two, three, and we will slip stitch into this into the same stitch again. So pull through and go through the loop, slip stitch, and tighten. And that is our first petal. So since we made six half double crochets, we will have six petals. And since they're a bit wide, you might have to move your petal over because it might be blocking one of our six stitches. You will just hold on to the magic circle and just pull. As you can see, it brought up this hidden stitch that was underneath our petal. So that is our second one. Second petal. It's our third petal. Four, five, six will be right here. It is a bit difficult to see. So just keep track while you're working the petals because it does get a bit confusing. So we will just repeat this process five more times all the way around. So again, we will chain three, one, two, three, yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and keep it loose. So we want to do this for a total of 10 times. We just finished our first one. So now we need nine more times. This was number two, number three, four, oops, five. So just keep doing this and I will meet you at the very end. Yarn over, pull through all of the loops except the very last one. Tighten a tiny bit, yarn over, go through both loops, tighten a tiny bit, chain three, and make a slip stitch in the same stitch. And that finishes off our second petal. And again, you might have to move it over a tiny bit to see your next stitch, which is right here. So I will meet you after we have six petals so I can show you how to join our work. Okay, so I have just finished the last petal by doing the chain three and slip stitching. So to join our work, it is a bit difficult to see, but we will find the chain three from the first petal right here. You can tell by how loose it is. Then we will just go into the last chain we can see, which is right here, and just slip stitch that together. It is a bit difficult with all of the petals. And just pull tightly. Then we can cut off our yarn, leave a long tail so we can sew in the flower onto our book sleeve. You can chain one and pull through if you would like, but I'm just going to pull through and there is our flower. Grab the next color for the inside of our flower. I will be using this yellow. So to connect our yellow yarn, we will find the middle of a petal. Any petal is fine. And you will see this little stitch. So we will go into the flower and back out under that little stitch. We will then grab our yellow yarn pull through. That way it is going in and out of that stitch. We will tie a knot. Make sure it's tight. And I'll do one more just in case. So now the yellow yarn is secure. We will be chaining four. So you will pull the yellow yarn under this little stitch and chaining four. One, two, three, four. And we will essentially be making one more petal that will just go in the middle right here. We have the chain four. We will go into the third chain. One, two, three. Again, we will yarn over, go into that third chain, pull up a loop, and keep it loose. And again, we will do ten of these. So that was our first one. Here's our second one, our third one, and just keep doing this until we have 10. This part is a bit more difficult. Be patient, and I will meet you once we have 
10. Okay, so we've made 10 loops. We will now yarn over and pull through all of the loops except the very last one. You can pull this a bit tightly. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops on our hook. Chain three. And go back into that third chain. Pull tightly. Then you can chain one and then cut off a little tail so we can connect everything together. So now we will insert our hook on the opposite side of where we attached. Come from the bottom about right here. We will go through this chain three spot right here. Wrap the yarn around and then pull through all the way down. So now the yarn is out through the back. And pull that a little so now we will insert our hook back where we first connected our yellow yarn and we will put it through this little spot wrap the yarn around again and pull all the way through then you can just pull on both ends of the yellow yarn and see the petal Coming into place, you can shape it a little, a little, however you like it. And then just so that this isn't all loose, you will have to pull tightly on both of these at the same time. And then you can tie them super tight. That way it does not move too much. And I do this about four or five times because this is on the back of the flower so you won't see your big knot and the more knots the more secure it is so just do as many as you want until you feel your flower is all secure i think that's good then we can cut off the yellow ends i leave the ends a bit long since this will be sewn onto the book sleeve and you can't see it just in case it ever gets a bit loose it has a longer end so it will be more resistant so now with this long end of our white yarn, finally sew that onto our book sleeve and we will be done. And just make sure it's in line with our, our button. That way it doesn't look uneven. So from my angle, this looks like a good spot for the flower. You can put it however high or low you want. I like putting it right in the middle. And you can turn the flower however you want because... For me, my petals end up being different sizes just because I don't keep my grip on the yarn very consistent. So that looks good to me from my angle. And so I, with the book in the sleeve, it makes it a lot easier so you don't accidentally weave onto the back side and then you end up tying your book sleeve like together. So then you can't put a book inside. Hold my flower in place like so. And I just go into these little loops, which are all our chain threes we made. And then I will just go into any of these stitches around the flower. You don't want to go too far out because then you will be able to see the white yarn. You want to go through pink stitches that are right underneath the petals so you cannot see. So you will just do that all the way around so your flower is secure. I will try to show you. My hands will be all in the way though, so that is the very first stitch. And you will want to tighten as you go along, just to make sure that the flower stays sec secure. Okay, so as you can see, the flower is not moving from the spot. So once you have sewn in your flower, you can just cut off your end and your book sleeve is done. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are.